Hello there, in this video I'm going to be talking about the new firmware DJI released last week for the Inspire 2. Alongside that there was also firmware for the Sedent remote controller as well as the app update for the Crystal Sky monitor and I'll come on to them a little bit later. But in this video I want to talk to you guys about this new firmware because it is a big one as well as a couple of quirks that you need to be aware of and actually whether you should update or not. Now before I get started I want to pass along a little bit of good news that you may or may not be aware of. The day the new firmware landed for the Inspire 2 which is version 1.2.0200 DJI also announced that they will be bringing ProRes RAW support to the X5S. Now up till now they have always stated that ProRes RAW would be X7 only. Now this firmware brings that ProRes RAW to DNG license units however they have now stated that they're also going to bring ProRes RAW to X5S models as well and that's really going to be good news for everyone. Now we don't have any more information than that as it stands. They've purely said they're going to bring it as soon as they possibly can. So it's a bit of a bonus for guys who are thinking they might have to upgrade to the X7 to get the new ProRes RAW codec as it stands now with the announcement they've made. Hold off because hopefully we will have a support for it on the X5S s very very soon now talking about this firmware itself it is a very big update this is the one we've been waiting for for some time that was delayed about a month as i said it's version 1.2.0200 and officially it brings support for apple prores raw and prores raw hq as i said as of today it is for x7 users only and you must have the cinema dng license it does not work with the prores license you must have the more expensive cinema dng license for raw the basics are it is raw alongside raw so while some people have said well it's prores why don't we get it with the smaller license the reality is that they've logged it alongside the raw aspect and it only comes with the dng whether that will change in the future i don't know but as of today you have to have the dng license to have the prores raw but it is a free upgrade other than that um, alongside this they have also updated the file system on the Cine SSD and they have now changed from FAT32 to XFAT and what that means is you are no longer going to suffer the 4 gigabyte file size limitation whereas before it would have to split your files up into 4 gig limits because that was a limitation of the formatting whereas XFAT doesn't have that so now that should not be an issue now all you have to do to use this is simply format your SSD in the Inspire 2 with the new firmware and that will then shift it from FAT32 over to XFAT. Now there are a whole host of other updates alongside this which includes a number of things that they fixed along the way. Now I have been flying this firmware for quite some time and I can say a few things as follows. They have fixed the issue where it would rotate the camera when you changed flight mode or you would land and shut the motors off. On this firmware Vision 0100 it would randomly just yaw the gimbal. It wouldn't really do it in flight unless you change flight mode. It would only do it when you made a change so they have fix that problem. Secondly they have now fixed the issue where it would cock its legs when you were trying to shut the motors down. Some users like myself noticed that when you'd land and hold the throttle to minimum it would actually sort of lift the back or the front legs a little before the motors would shut down. Having used this firmware that has completely disappeared and when you land and the motors shut down they just stop and you don't get that lifting of the legs whatsoever. Finally they have made some tweaks to the flight controller with this firmware and overall stability is improved and they do go through this in the release notes so I would suggest downloading them and having a read and what they say they've improved hover stability at low level and changed the compass algorithm at high level. In my experience what I can say is this firmware is a lot more stable in flight. Hover performance it is a lot better and the craft doesn't move around as much in a box like it used to. I've had the Inspire 1 and the Inspire 2 and both models would move a little bit in a square box of one meter say and it wouldn't quite be as stable as a Phantom 4 Pro or a Mavic Pro or something like that. Whereas this new firmware they have made dramatic improvements to that stability. Um, 
alongside that, they've added some customizable features and stuff for the Sindents, which I'll come on to later. Now, there are some things you do need to be aware of with this firmware, and they are as follows. Whilst they have updated the flight control algorithm and it is more stable, they have also introduced a strange yaw bug. And the aircraft, for some people, and I haven't seen this, but I have seen a video of it happening, would randomly do sort of a half quick spin. And it seems to be strange and a bit odd why it suddenly does that. Alongside that, there are some incorrect messages coming up on the Go app as well. And some people have found that they are getting landing gear going up and landing gear going down messages. Now, the gear itself doesn't move. It's not that the aircraft is actually doing it, it is just that Go 4 is saying your landing gear is changing when it actually isn't. As a result of these few things, I'm going to say the following recommendation. Unless you are an X7 user and you absolutely need ProRes RAW, I would actually hold off from updating to version 0200 a minute. DJI are aware of these two little issues and they're hopefully gonna get them resolved very quickly. The reason I'm saying hold off is if you're an X5 user, you're not really going to get a benefit from this firmware as it stands today and if there's another update released in a week or so you're gonna have to update again to get rid of those strange bugs so what I would actually say is if you're on 0100 just hold back a minute unless you absolutely need the ProRes RAW whilst those bugs are random and they're not affecting people too much my opinion is why jump over to it when there might be another firmware in a week or two's time um, overall the firmware is actually very solid apart from those two little bugs and the flight control and the ProRes RAW has really, really been quite impressive. I haven't actually got to see the footage myself yet, but all the reports online and the people are saying that it is very, very impressive, especially the amount you can pull out of highlights. With that coming to the X5S as well, that is going to be a big, big benefit for a lot of Inspire 2 users because whilst the X7 is a fantastic camera, it's also substantially more expensive and a lot of people have already committed to the X5S with the M43 lens system and bringing ProRes RAW alongside that is only a good thing for those users including myself. Just finally on the firmware for this, if you're not going to update to version 01, 02, 0200 and wait as I've suggested, I would strongly suggest that you do make sure you are on the last version of firmware which was version 01, 02, 100 because there are updates in this as per my other video for your battery packs for the Inspire 2 and it resolves an issue with cell errors. If you haven't updated to 01, 0100 at very least, I would strongly suggest suggest doing so after updating if you've had any issues with your battery packs put them on the shelf for 90 hours and do not touch them because in that period of time the firmware does a balance on them and if you have any packs with cells that are out of balance or you're getting incorrect cell errors hopefully that will resolve it for you okay alongside this firmware was also an update for the Sindense remote controller as well which is version 02000120 and DJI state as follow they've added function to use the LS and RL RS levers I should say, which is those two on the side there to adjust the maximum gimbal rotation and they've also added the function to use customizable buttons however that is only going to be with go version 4.2.24 and that currently isn't available for the crystal sky and that is going to be dropping hopefully in the near future but alongside the firmware for the inspire 2 was also the update for the sendence remote controller as i've mentioned before if you're updating the sendence you can see i've got the patch antenna fitted it's strongly advised you always update with the patch fitted because there is firmware on board the antenna and to make sure it is on the latest firmware make sure it's plugged into the cam port and the antenna ports before updating even if you do use the omnidirectional sticks just swap over to the patch just to do the update and put the omnidirectional sticks back on later and use it as you did before for me I always use it with the patch antenna because in my opinion it actually does make a really good difference 
Finally talking about the Crystal Sky because there was an update for this out last week. However, it wasn't for the system firmware. In a few of my earlier videos, and that's going back some time now, I mentioned that the Crystal Sky up till now had always had the Go app updated alongside the system image. And what I mean by that is the Android system image. So you had to update the entire device. A few firmwares back, they introduced the option of updating the Go app independently because Crystal Sky does not use the standard Android app it uses a slightly different version and they introduced the option to update the app on its own but they hadn't used it that is until now and last week they pushed the first app update on its own out to the Crystal Sky and they've done another one again this week so the Go 4 app on the Crystal Sky has now been updated to 4.2.21 and you can update that by simply turning on your Crystal Sky on Wi-Fi open DJI Go 4 and as long as it's connected to the internet it should come up with a prompt to say it has detected an update would you like to download it and that will then update just the Go 4 app on the Crystal Sky itself. Mine has just come up to do it now so I simply need to say install and then that will install the latest Go app onto the Crystal Sky device. The advantage to that is it is no longer updating the whole system image and it means you don't have to mess around with settings and you don't have to mess around with anything else. Overall, that is pretty much it for this video. I wanted to explain what the situation was with the Inspire 2 with that new firmware. And again, as I mentioned, unless you need that ProRes RAW, unless you have the X7, I, I would just hold off this new firmware a second just to get those two bugs sorted because hopefully they're going to push another update out literally at any time to solve those issues that they introduced with this firmware. Make sure you update your Syndense with the patch antenna connected and make sure you do your Crystal Sky up to the latest Go 4 app as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope the information has been useful. The there are some links in the description of this video that allow me to keep the channel running. I do appreciate it when people buy their DJI products by those videos and it allows me to continue to buy products to be able to talk to you guys about. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you for watching and I'll do another one again soon.